Welcome to Movie Shortens. We are back again to explain to you a 2009 American post-apocalyptic thriller film called Carriers. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. There is a deadly infection caused by a strange virus, killing most of the people worldwide. There are four survivors, brothers Brian and Danny along with Brian's girlfriend Bobby and Danny's friend Kate. They are on a car trip to Turtle Beach, the brothers' childhood favorite location to get away from the epidemic. At Midway, the group notices a car lying across the main road. It is one of the survivors, Frank, and his daughter Jody. Brian requires the team to pull up the windows. Frank asks if the group can share him some fuel. In return, he will give them food and water. However, Kate warns the team that Frank's daughter Jody is infected. Brian immediately starts the engine to avoid the virus from the Franks. As the group are getting away, Frank draws a wrench and smashes at their car's window. Brian quickly drives off the car on the side and escapes. However, the car bottom is broken, spilling gasoline on the road. After running for a while, the car breaks down. While Donnie and Bobby suggest making a deal with Frank, Brian and Kate argue that it is dangerous and highly infectious. Finally, the four have no choice but to carry fuel cans to see Frank. As the group approaches closer to Frank, Brian points the gun at the men revealing that they would take Frank's car. At this time, Frank informs the team that the CDC has developed a serum for the pandemic in a high school nearby. Therefore, Frank needs to bring Jody so she can be cured. While Brian suspects Frank's insistence, Danny comes up with an idea. The four will be in front seats while Frank and Jody are on the back. Danny uses a plastic shield to isolate the infected. They will sterilize the whole car before driving to the high school. As the group pass by their broken car, Danny gets back to take the photo of the brothers when they were young. After that, Bobby spends time playing with little Jody in the car. When Brian makes some dirty jokes over Bobby, he gets hit in the face, causing the car to run out of the road. Kate accidentally holds onto the shield, making the tapes lose a bit. Being afraid of the infection, Kate rushes out of the car. Danny follows to reassure her that she'll be fine. At the moment, Danny and Kate also notices an abandoned car in front of them. Danny and Brian decide to check on the car if they can take some fuel from it. When they open the car, there is a body of an infected man. Danny tries to get the car's key. However, when he turns back, the man is still alive and weakly says something. Danny is frightened and immediately gets out of the car while the man inside still hits the door for help. The brothers quickly escape from the infected man. At night, the group starts for rest. As Brian and Bobby sneak out for some fun, Kate and Danny talk to Frank and Jody. Frank asks Danny the reason they go to Turtle Beach. Danny explains that this location is their childhood home which is remote from others. Therefore, Brian and Danny think that it is safe for them to shelter until the epidemic is over. While chilling by a fire, the group sees some noise on the main road. There is a tank chasing a car, then a guy gets shot by another man in the tank. The group quickly puts out the fire and tries to hide from the strange men. The following morning, the team continues their trip to the high school while passing the shot guy last night hanging on the Voltaire tree. The group moves to an infectious town where nobody survives. The infected bodies are packed up in a trash truck. The group enters high school where they expect to have serum. Bobby volunteers to stay back with Jody while the others break into the school looking for the serum. While checking, the trio see child running to a room at the corner. They slowly follow the child and realize that there is a doctor working. At another door, Frank also enters. The four talk to the doctor on duty if they can have the serum for Jody. However, they discover that the serum only works for three days and then the infected would die anyway. The group is also astonished because the doctor is preparing mercy death for the children at the school. Frank pleads with the doctor to save Jody and the infected children inside the camp. However, the doctor says that he has done his best to save people. Sometimes they have to choose the less painful death. Frank understands that the serum can't cure his daughter. He lets the doctor euthanize the children. The four then get out of the school. Meanwhile, Bobby is having some fun with Jody. The little girl accidentally encounters a breathing problem, making her collapse in a car. Bobby has to save Jody in an emergency. She takes the shield down and reaches Jody. However, when Bobby pulls out the mask so Jody can breathe normally, Jody vomits blood all over Bobby's body and a car. Seeing the four getting out of the school, Bobby quickly retapes the shield and takes off her body coat. 
Frank gets in a car, seeing Jody on the floor. As Frank holds Jody in his hand, the girl insists on going to the toilet. Frank calms and encourages Jody to go by herself to the toilet nearby. However, Jody is too weak to walk by herself so Frank has to go with her. Before leaving, Frank appreciates Danny's kindness. Brian then quickly urges the rest to get in a car and leave Frank's and Jody behind. They know that the father and daughter will die soon. Later that day, while Danny and Kate are sterilizing the back seats, Bobby sneakily throws her bloody coat under the car, keeping her mouth shut so the trio don't leave her behind. They head to a hotel nearby for another night's rest. Brian finds a dirty pool at the hotel. He tries to check what is under with a stick. As the stick gets stuck, Brian manages to pull it out and discovers a dead body. He is scared and almost falls down the pool, but Danny makes it to secure him. After that, the group decides to play golf together. When Brian falls down and wants Bobby to hold his hand, she uses a golf club instead to avoid infecting Brian. Brian tries to have some fun with Bobby on the sand, but she is mad at him. The group has so much fun at the golf field. They hit the balls to the windows from the ruined building nearby, unaware that the building was occupied by the armed survivalists. At night, while Danny and Kate are at the lobby, they see some lights at the door. Realizing that it is not Brian's, Danny and Kate rush to hide in the kitchen, not forgetting to take a knife along for defense. An armed man enters and notices that a knife is missing. Danny and Kate sneak around and get out of the kitchen. Unfortunately, the two are soon captured. Meanwhile, Brian gets back to the hotel. He notices some armed guys around the hotel and understands that the hotel is under control. He strains a guy to get to know who they are and soon realize that Danny, Kate, and Bobby are intimidated by the group of guys protecting clothes. Brian has to surrender. The group accuses them for killing Larry, the guy whose body is in a pool earlier, and contaminating the hotel. They force Bobby and Kate to accompany them. When the girls are being ordered to take off the clothes, they uncover Bobby's infection. Being scared of getting infected, the leader of the group lets them go away. The following day, the four continue their trip in a tense situation when Bobby is virus positive. Brian subsequently forces Bobby to leave the group. Bobby begs Brian to save her but to the rule, she has to leave. Bobby runs after the car in vain, but the car keeps moving forward. As the car runs out of fuel, the trio sees another car on the far end. At this moment, Brian is still upset about what he did with Bobby. He decides to stop that car regardless of Danny and Kate's discouragement. While Danny manages to arrange with the two women in the other car to ask for fuel, Brian suddenly pulls the trigger on the two women, causing the driver to die. Danny gets mad at what Brian has just done as he tries to stop him from shooting the innocents. Then Brian approaches and forces the alive woman to walk out of the car. However, that woman gets out with a gun and shoots at Brian's leg. Brian falls down but still opens the fire at her. Brian then limps to the car and orders Danny to take the fuel. At this point, seeing what Brian has bloody killed innocent people makes Danny lose control. The brothers start fighting. Brian explains to Danny that in this situation, they have to save themselves. If they don't kill the two women, they cannot go to Turtle Beach and will finally get infected. Danny has nothing to say but accept the truth. The trio continues to drive off. Kate now is the driver as Brian is injured. Seeing Brian get pale, Danny suggests they should stop at an abandoned house nearby to look for medicine or first aid kits to help Brian. While Kate and Danny look for the way to break into the house, Kate notices a broken window on the second floor. Danny then climbs up and sneaks in. He accidentally sees an infected woman die in a chair while still holding a gun in her hand. Danny slowly takes the gun from the woman for self-defense. When he enters the bedroom, he sees a wild dog eating the body of an infected man. As Danny notices some medicines on a table nearby, he slowly comes closer for it so the dog can leave him alone. However, he accidentally drops a jar, irritating the dog. After that, the dog attacks him aggressively. Danny has to kill it with his gun. He then gets out of the house with the dog's blood all over the shirt. Danny explains to them what happened. While treating Brian's wound, Danny realizes Brian is also infected. Danny sees Kate after that to tell her the truth. Kate wants to abandon Brian but Danny couldn't as Brian is his brother. The trio then continues to drive in the night, leaving Brian isolated at the back seat. While stopping for rest, Brian requires Danny to hand him the car key so he can make sure that Danny and Kate don't abandon him. As Brian is getting weaker and falls into blackout, Danny slowly steals the gun and the car key from Brian. Unfortunately, 
Brian is awake when Kate and Danny walk away. The two rush to the car and start the engine. However, Brian switched the real keys earlier. A moment later, Brian unlocks the car from outside. Kate then has no choice but to hand Danny the gun to kill Brian. Danny tries to negotiate with his brother for the keys. However, Brian keeps walking toward Danny, leaving Danny no choice but to pull the trigger at Brian. The following morning, Danny sits next to the burnt body of Brian. After that, Danny and Kate get in a car and drive to Turtle Beach. They arrive at Danny's childhood's house. Danny feels lonely and recalls memories about his brother at this beach. Subscribe to watch more videos like this and don't forget to turn on your notification. That really hurts my channel. Thanks for watching.